Now we're going to go over the administrator account setup. Once you log back into your software and you're looking at our dashboard, look towards the top of the page and a little to the right. You're going to see a button up here that says Quick Account Setup. Click on this button to open up a new window where we can set up the administrator account information. What you'll see here is prepare information for the admin preparer. You'll have the name, P10, the user type, as well as login security. Let's click on the edit icon here to proceed. On the next screen, you're going to see the prepare information. You'll see the name, their type, their P10, as well as their phone number. All of this information is editable if need be. The P10, we will put in a default P10 in there for you, so feel free to adjust as necessary. If you scroll down, you'll see the address information as well as power of attorney information. If this applies, please fill it out. Otherwise, you may disregard. Down at the bottom, there is PIN signature information where you can enter your five digit PIN signature number that applies to the form 8878 and 8879. By entering this number here, you won't have to enter it every single time you prepare 8878 or 8879. For Oregon, New York, or New Mexico preparers, these boxes are for you if they apply. If you are not one of those preparers or do not prepare any of those state returns, you may disregard. Once all of your changes have been made, press save and continue to proceed. On the next screen, you will see security questions. This is another layer of login security if you wish to set it up. When you log in, you will be asked two out of these three questions and must provide the correct answer to proceed. You just select the drop down box, select a question, enter the answers, and then once you've entered your information, you will just click on save changes. This is not required if you do not wish to do so, so feel free to skip just by pressing here. On the third screen, you'll have login security for two-factor authentication. The phone number and email that you provided when signing up, it will be used for your two-factor authentication and you may change if necessary. If you do not want two-factor authentication, you can click on disable to remove this. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see the option to set up Google authentication. This is an app you can download to your phone that will provide you with a six digit code to log in. Click on setup to proceed. If you scroll down a little bit further, you have the option to add on another layer of login security by providing a four digit pin. Once you have made your selections, press on complete to proceed. Pressing complete will bring you to the firm information page. This will import the admin preparer's name, firm name, address, city, state, zip, email, and phone number. If you need to adjust these, just uncheck this box and edit as necessary. On the right, you have firm information regarding their EIN state ID number as well as EFIN number. Only one of these numbers is actually required to use the software, which would be your firm EFIN number here. If you do not have a federal EIN, check the box here to indicate that you're self-employed and the software will not require you to enter that value. Once that is completed, scroll down to the bottom and click on Save Changes. Save Changes will take you to the pricing setup. Now, you are required to set up at least the federal and state. You are not required, although you are encouraged, to enter discounts and additional charges if you wish. On the federal, you have an option to create a fixed rate for all returns. Enter your value here. So if I want to say $100, that means every return that I prepare will be charged $100. Another option is to set price as per form. By clicking this option, you'll see all the form numbers listed out here with the 1040, Schedule 1, 2, 3, as well as selecting other options for schedules, others, worksheets, or you could show all to show every form in the software and assign its respective rate. Once you have made all of your entries, just scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and click on Save Federal Pricing. We do have one third option here, Set Price Manually After Every Return. 
just by selecting this option, you will indicate when you are creating the invoice how much you want to charge on every return. It allows you to put in any number you'd like. Just click on Save Federal Pricing, and then you will get this message that has been updated successfully, and then you can click on Continue to State Pricing. State Pricing is similar to Federal, but it also gives you one additional pricing option. You have the fixed rate for all state returns, setting the price for all the forms in each state. You would just want to select which state you want to enter the pricing for and it will adjust accordingly. You have the option to set the price manually after every state return, or you could set the price for each state regardless of how many forms are contained within that state return. Just for our time, we're going to select set manually and click on save state pricing. And then we are going to click on continue to discount. If you want to add a discount, you will just select if you want it to apply to federal or state and then enter a discount. Let's put in an example, repeat. And we'll give our repeat customers a $25 discount. And you can check this box to default this discount to all returns. This means it will apply to everyone regardless. Leaving this unchecked will not default this discount and you will have to manually go select it when doing the pricing. Once you've made your enter, click on add discount. You will get the notification that it's been updated successfully. And you'll see it down here with the option to edit or delete if necessary. And you can click on additional charges to do the same thing. So let's say we have a printing fee applies to the federal and we're going to charge an extra $10. You have the same option to default this additional charge to all returns or not by leaving it unchecked. But once you've made your selections and entries, click on add additional charges. And if you scroll down, you will see the edit or delete option as well. Once completed with the pricing, click on continue to invoice config. Invoice configuration and setup. This must be filled out one time every tax season. These three boxes here must contain an entry. Otherwise, you won't be able to complete the invoice once you're wrapping up your client's tax return. For the invoice number prefix, you can enter any value that may apply. So we're just going to put in the current year. The invoice sequence starting number. And I like to start mine with the number one. And then the office location. Whatever may apply. It could be the street name, city name, county name. I'm just going to put in Maine. Now these two options down here if you wish, if you're going to be offering bank products, you can treat all bank payments as an invoice until you receive the funding. And then you will have an option here to show a detailed fee disclosure for bank products. You may select these options if you wish. It's not required. And you can always come back later and select these if necessary. Once these entries have been made, you can just press save and close. It'll return you back to the dashboard and the administrator account has been fully set up.